folks, once again, I bring you absolutely shockingly good breaking news with regard to elections that took place in the state of Texas. Now, uh, I'm kind of spoiling it with our thumbnail here being displayed on the TV behind me. Nonetheless, uh, we're going to pause and get to the really big news in a moment. But first, I do want to start off with the bad news so we can end on a more positive note. So Maine also voted today, and there was a competitive Democratic Party primary taking place. And in that race, you had um, two people who were attempting to... Uh, be the one to take on Susan Collins in November. Who needs to go? So you had Sarah Gideon. She's a more centrist, pro-corporate Democrat who endorsed Joe Biden over all the other candidates. And you also have Betsy Sweet. This is the justice Democrat. This is the individual who's been endorsed by brand new Congress. She was the more Bernie Sanders-like candidate. And unfortunately, she was defeated. But not all hope is lost in Maine because Maine, as many of you know by now, has ranked choice voting. And in November, there will still be a progressive option on the ballot. Lisa Savage, she is a Green Party candidate. She's extremely progressive, just as progressive as Betsy Sweet. She supports Medicare for All, a Green New Deal. She's pro-labor. And what you can do is you can rank your choices. You can have Lisa Savage be your first choice and make Sarah Gideon your second choice. So you're voting your conscience, but you're not inadvertently spoiling the election at the behest of Susan Collins. This is really an option that I hope a lot of people look into in Maine. And I hope that Betsy Sweet will use, you know, the campaign that she built uh, to mobilize for Lisa Savage so we can still get a progressive option in there. Um, so there's that. Uh, when it comes to local races in Texas, there was a competitive race in Travis County for district attorney. And the incumbent, Margaret Moore, was ousted by a candidate who was endorsed by DSA, Jose Garza. And this is truly a huge win. Now, when it comes to house races, we had some really important races taking place. Um, two races that I was watching really closely were the races with Mike Siegel and Donna Imam. I've had Donna on the show multiple times. I had Mike Siegel on. These are candidates that are absolutely excellence. Uh, they're pro-labor. They are pro-Medicare for all, pro-union. They basically check all of the boxes if you are a democratic socialist or, you know, even a social democrat. These are phenomenal candidates. Uh, so when it comes to Mike Siegel, he defeated the establishment-backed Democrat Pratesh Gandhi in a landslide with 54.5% of the vote to Gandhi's 45.5 with 77% reporting at the time that I record this video. This is almost a 10-point difference, and this is absolutely huge. If you don't know about Mike Siegel, this is someone who truly knows what he's talking about. Like, he has a solid campaign and running in Texas. The way that he appealed to people there using uh, policies like Medicare for All, like, he wasn't hiding from Medicare for All. He was using that as a selling point and having conversations with people and convincing them, like, actually changing hearts and minds. So the campaign that he ran was phenomenal. I'd encourage you to watch the interview that I did with him. He was endorsed by Bernie Sanders. I mean, this is someone who truly, uh, you know, he had his work cut out for him, he was the underdog, and he won. Now, when it comes to Texas's 31st congressional district, Donna Imam was an even bigger underdog because not only did she lack support from the Democratic Party establishment, really the only public figure who gave her any time was Andrew Yang. So this is someone, though, who is a phenomenal candidate. She supports Medicare for All. This is an engineer who is sharp. She knows exactly, you know, what she's doing. Uh, the conversations that she's having with people are changing hearts and minds. Her district is winnable. So the fact that she didn't get more attention, it's criminal to me. Um, so I had her on the show three times. I love Donna Ivan. And um, she absolutely obliterated her opponent. She beat Christine Mann in a landslide with 56.6% of the vote to Mann's 43.4% with 62% reporting. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a landslide. That is a landslide victory. And if you, you know, weren't paying attention to Donna Imam's race, now you're going to want to pay attention. Now she's got your attention because this is an individual who 
is absolutely what the left needs. Like, if we had her in Congress, uh, the difference that she'd be able to make is remarkable. And the fact that she pulled this off in uh, Texas with no institutional support, no media coverage, I mean, when I saw the results, I was honestly emotional because, you know, this is exactly what we need. We need to show people and show the establishment and America that progressives and left-wing politicians, they can win anywhere, including in Texas. Now, there's another semi-victory. I'm going to count this as a victory. Um, so in the 24th Congressional District of Texas, Candace Valenzuela defeated Kim Olsen in another landslide, winning by almost 20 points with 60% of precincts reporting. Now, in this race, the better candidate won. Kim Olsen was a horrible candidate. Um, we're talking scandals to the extent that she's culpable for Iraq war profiteering, allegedly. I mean, it's it's not something that um you want if you're trying to win in Texas, right? Like, you want a Democrat who is strong. So Candace is the better candidate on top of that. She has a really good story. She was previously homeless. Um, so I think that, you know, what she was saying speaks to people. Although I will say she doesn't support Medicare for all. If you go to her website, it says she wants to, you know, expand access to health care and she supports the Affordable Care Act. She was endorsed by people like Kamala Harris, uh, Elizabeth Warren. Not not great. I mean, the, the fact that she doesn't support Medicare for All, honestly, is kind of a non-starter. But I am still happy that she beat Kim Olsen because Kim Olsen was an awful candidate. Um, but I mean, overall, the real victories here for me, uh, Mike Siegel, Donna Iman. These are victories that weren't necessarily expected. These were the underdogs and they didn't just win. They won in landslides, both of them. This is huge, not to mention, you know, um, the district attorney race with Jose Garza. I mean, this is a good night for progressives. And, you know, maybe I'm just a little bit too cynical because I wasn't necessarily expecting to be making this video right now. I wasn't expecting to be talking about progressive victories in Texas. But here we are, and I am uh, I, I couldn't be happier.